Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Premiere Scripting Quick Tip Tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to write your own function that scales any clip to the size of your sequence. And when we run this, it's going to scale it to fit no matter if it's overcompensated on either axis. So this is going to be a nice quick script which goes over the basics of how we can mathematically achieve this, access the clip, and change the scale property. Before we get started, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the code for this, how to scale your clip to a sequence, as well as this cool Premiere Script Editor extension we created uh, a couple weeks back. And you can use this to edit and create your own scripts quickly and run them inside of the program itself. Make sure you follow us there on GitHub for coding updates as well. And in the description, follow us on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not a member of the Discord server, you can come and join and get help with scripting extensions, plugins, expressions, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us financially and get cool perks, you can become a YouTube channel member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. Link in the description. So we're going to go ahead and start up a new uh, project here. We'll call it uh, Fit Clip to Sequence. We'll change it from Scale to Clip or Fit. And uh, we'll go ahead and make sure this is clear here. We're gonna start off by creating this function itself. We're gonna call this fit clip to sequence. And this is gonna be what we call in order to scale any clip. So we could give it a whole range of clips and it would just run this one function for each of them and make it super efficient. And all we're gonna require for this is going to be a clip. And again, just as a reminder, a clip is any, any sort of piece of footage on a track here inside of Premiere. So if it was up here, this would be the first clip of video track two, or if I moved it up here, the first clip of video track three, and you can have a whole line of clips as an edited video, of course. So that's all we're going to provide it because our clip contains uh, the ability to scale and we're going to leverage that and automatically set these up mathematically so that no matter what the scale is set to, it's gonna fit appropriately. So if you wanna make sure this is working, all we need to do is call fit clip to sequence, and we're gonna provide it with a clip. Now the clip is going to be this first one. So we're gonna say app.project.active sequence. They have a sequence open here, and we wanna grab the, in this case, first clip of the first video track. So I'm going to say dot video tracks, the first one, because it's an array, so the first value is zero. And the first clip, we're gonna grab the clips, and the first one is value zero. So that should give us clip. If I go ahead and inside of here say alert clip.name, save it and run it, you can see now we're going to get the actual name of that clip alerted. So now we have the function set up, let's do the math. First, we're gonna create a variable in here called sequence. Uh, here we did app.project.active sequence, that's gonna be what our sequence is. We're going to assume they have a sequence opened up in the program. Then I'm gonna create a variable for our clip width and one for our clip height. We're going to hard code these in for now, but if you wanted, you could go ahead and read these from the project item of the clip. But I already know that most of the footage I work with is 1920 by 1080. So I'm going to set that up as the information for my clip width and my clip height. Now, how are we going to physically change the the scale height and scale width values. If I reset my motion effect here to the default, you can see there's three things that deal with scale. We have scale, scale width, and uniform scale. In order to make sure we're precise, we need to be able to adjust not just one scale parameter that scales everything in one uh, uniform way. We want to uncheck this and be able to widen this as much as it needs to be wide and make it tall as as much as it needs to be tall in order to fit our sequence. So the first thing sort of that we need to do is check off uniform scale. Now, in order to do this, go ahead and go back into here. We're going to reference uh, our clip. So I'm going to say var clip, or sorry. I so we need to actually access this motion here and then the property called uh, uniform scale. These are called components if you aren't aware. So the way we access our components is we grab our clip and dot components. Now in this case, the motion component happens to be value one in the array. So if I go ahead and just say dot display name, 
usually for components, I believe there's a display name. So I'll say alert clip components one dot display name, and this will give me motion. If we go into our effect controls, motion is indeed the name of the sort of effect that holds our scale. Now what property number down here is our scale? Remembering that our properties start at zero because it's an array, we have zero, one, two, three. So the third value or the third property of this component is our uniform scale. So let's go ahead and say components one dot properties three. And let's grab the display name for that, save it and run it. You can see we get uniform scale. Now, if I wanted to say, what is the value of this? I could just say, get value. And because we're in Premiere, we need to convert this to a string to alert it. You can see the value of this uniform scale is true. So if I set this to false, it should uncheck it. So let's go ahead and remove our alert. And we're gonna say clip.components1, property three, that's our uniform scale. Instead of get value, we're going to say set value. The thing we're gonna reset it to is false. And the second argument is if we want to refresh the user interface, which yes, we do. So false is the value we're setting it to and true to refresh. Now, if I save this and run it, you can see the uniform scale is now unchecked. Now, for some reason, I'll go ahead and check it here. If I run this, it disables the uniformity, but it doesn't quite re-enable the scale width yet. That might be fixed as we apply the rest of the math here. So now we've unchecked the uniform scale. We should be able to now modify the scale X and the scale Y. By default, the scales are set to 100, right? So we need to basically use that as a reference. If it needs to be smaller, it needs to be below uh, 100. If it needs to be scaled up to match the sequence size, it needs to be greater than 100. So how do I get the ratio of how much I need to scale it up or scale down. Well, let's take the sequence width divided by the clip width. So if the sequence width is 1920 and the clip is half of that, it will give us two. And that is, means two times 100 is 200, would mean we need to scale that to 200. So sequence width or sequence height divided by the clip width or the clip height will give us the sort of scale we need. So let's go ahead and say var x. We're going to need a scale for the x and a scale for the y. So I'll say var x and var y. x is going to be our sequence. And to get the pixel width, we need to say frame size horizontal. And if we want to get the sequence uh, dot a height, we would say frame size vertical. And then we're going to basically divide that by our clip width. So this is going to say 1920 divided by 1920. And this one divided by our clip height. Now that's going to give us a very uh, small number between like zero to five. Uh, so if we multiply it by 100, it's going to give us the actual scale value it should be. Because if this needs to be scaled up two times, I can't apply the number two to the scale. That's gonna make the scale two. Instead, it needs to be 200. So we need to multiply it by the original scale width value. So we'll just multiply it by 100 to redo that. And now uh, we, need to, we need to put this code afterwards. We're gonna deselect the uniform scale and now we need to set the height, scale height, and scale width values accordingly to our x and y values. So we already have the code on how to access the uniform scale, which is right after them. So I can just copy and paste this two times. Move this over here. So instead of property three, we'll say property uh, one and two, I believe. Zero, one, two. So property one is actually the height. So we want to make sure we do that in the right order. First is the height, then the width. Property one, we're going to set the value to Y. Property two, set the value to X. Now if I save this, and now if I run this script, you can see we magically scale up to the proper sizing. And we can also adjust this uh, and run this as many times to use as many of the clips as you want. If you wanted to batch resize 
like a whole bunch of clips along your timeline, you could just loop through all of your clips here and resize all of them. But the main thing is to just do some simple math and simplify the whole process. We take the ratio b between the sequence width and height and the clip itself width and height, multiply it by 100 to get the actual scaled value. And uh, once that's complete, we can easily scale our clips to match our sequence size. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the thumbs up button down below. Hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the code for this, how to fit a clip to a sequence, as well as the Premiere Script Editor extension, which you can check out for free in GitHub. Follow us there on GitHub for coding updates. And in the description, follow us on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not a member of the Discord server, you can come and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us financially and get cool perks, you can become a YouTube member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. Link in the description. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.